My name is Kien Pham, and uh, if you expect to hear from uh, somebody else, uh, you're in the wrong room. But uh, you can stay. Um, in the presentation today, I'm going to break it into three parts. Uh, the first five minutes, I go through some slides to give you a landscape of careers and jobs and work out there. Please come sit down. The second five minutes, I'll uh, tell you uh, the choices I made, why, and what kind of impact that uh, it had on me and my family. And then the, the next, the last five minutes will be about you. Uh, your questions, I'll answer your questions. And if I don't have the answer, I'll find the answer for you. Okay? Uh, as you can tell, I'm standing here with a cane. I am actually uh, legally blind. I'm, um, I cannot see very well, so when we get to the uh, Q&A uh, portion, when you raise your hand, please say, I have a question, or question, so I can hear you, and I will look for you, okay? If you just quietly raise your hand, I, will, I assure you, I will not see you. So, I put away the cane. Right. Now, if you look at the slide here, um, a, a, a career, a work life, there are many considerations. It's work, it's play, it's family, it's where, uh, what you will be in the future. But I think the central question uh, will be what do you want to do, what do you want to become, okay? And, and it will become more apparent to you why that question is important at the end of this. But in general, in the work, li uh, work life, uh, you, you, you have two choices in terms of a path, okay? You can be a generalist, somebody who can do a lot of things in a lot of places, uh, dealing with organization and people, or you can be a specialist who would focus on one area of work and have uh, deep understanding and expertise in that area. An example of a specialist is a doctor, is a lawyer, is a policeman. Uh, an example of a generalist is a manager, a manager of a small store, maybe a Domino Pizza down the road here, or a big company like uh, La Vie Water or Coca-Cola. So they learn to manage many things, big or small. They are generalists, okay? And then you have also three sectors that you can choose from. The first sector is what I call the private sector. It includes companies and businesses like Apple Computer, like Fumi Hung, the company that owns this school, or like I said, the Domino Pizza down the road. Their aim is to make a profit while providing quality good and services to you, the consumer. The second sector is the, pub the public sector, which is basically the government. That, is in that includes people like the mayor, you know, they are elected, or the president elected or appointed people like uh, the judges, uh, the policemen I mentioned before, who, who are there to, to serve the public, to serve you, and to protect you. Those are the three sectors. Oh, I forgot the nonprofit. The nonprofit sector includes organizations like a hospital, FE Hospital down the road here, a foundation, that protects uh, and promotes the environment. Uh, you can be a teacher or a doctor or an activist in this sector, okay? So if you're a teacher, you probably work in a nonprofit sector. And they call that NGO, non-governmental organization, NGO. The four arenas, you see there, we have local, national, regional and global. There are four playgrounds for you to choose from. You can choose to work only in a local city or a small town, like being a teacher at this school, 
okay? That is local. Or you can work in a company that sells things nationally, like La Vie Water. You know, they sell bottled water around Vietnam. Or you can choose to work in a regional organization like the Asian Development Bank, which provides banking support and services and loans to countries in Asia. Or you can work globally in an organization like the United Nations or you know, the US or um, Scandinavian Diplomatic Corps. They have offices around the world and you can be a diplomat working in many different countries. So those are the four playgrounds that you can choose to work from. So as you can see here, I have two paths and three sectors and four arenas, and we have a missing one. Okay, the missing number one is purpose. Purpose. I know it's kind of a tough question for you because you're still young, and probably most of you have not have to think about the answer to this question, what is your purpose in life, okay? But I encourage you to begin thinking about this as you embark on choosing a major in college and a career later. What excites you the most is that to teach other people to become a teacher, or to become a doctor, to cure diseases, or to travel the world as a diplomat, or to become a businessman and run an organization to sell soft drink. All right? You figure it out. You have the answer for that. But you have to ask people, older people, your mom and dad, your teachers, ask people to help you develop this sense of purpose because that will be the inner compass for you to move forward in the future and choose the kind of career you want to have. So let me quickly recap. I make it easy for you to remember what I shared with you this morning. If you can count one, two, three, four, you got it, right? One is one purpose. You got to have a purpose. Two is you have two paths in life, a specialist or a generalist. Three, there are three sectors that you can work in, private sector, public sector, and nonprofit sector. And there are four, four arenas, local, national, regional, meaning many countries in a region like Asia or North America, or global, the whole world. Yes, you can work in the whole world, anywhere you want. So one, two, three, four are what you need to remember from today. Now, let me go to the second part about myself, okay? I made it uh, very early on in my life that I wanted to be a generalist. I didn't want to become a doctor or a lawyer. I wanted to have the ability to do many things with many people in many places. So when I entered college, instead of going with my many, many friends into engineering, because Vietnamese people are supposed to be good at math and engineering, you know. So most of my friends went into engineering. I went into business, and I studied international business. When I graduated, I worked in politics for a short while, a year. Then I went to Stanford to get my MBA, that a master of business administration. That gave me more tools to be a generalist, I could do many things. I could manage many organizations, big or small, right? So from there, I worked in big companies like Procter & Gamble P&G. They make shampoos and soap and diapers, uh, selling globally. And I was in their international group. Then 
At Tentacle, another large company based out of Houston, I did the same thing. I was their vice president for international business in Asia. It, that's the private sector. And I also worked in the public sector. I worked at the White House. I worked at the Pentagon. I worked in the US Congress. And at the White House, I was in uh, international trade policy. At the Pentagon, I was in international security affairs. And then I was interested in the nonprofit sector also. So I started and managed nonprofit foundations, providing scholarships to young people to go to college and graduate school in the US. So there is a common thread going all through all of this. You see, international, right? So I wanted to be a generalist. I wanted to work in all three sectors, okay? And I wanted to do it in the international arena. So it was a choice that I made early on in my life. Now, what was my purpose, you ask, right? I sat down and I talked to a lot of older people, more experienced people, and I decided that my purpose in life would be to make a difference to make a difference, to make life better for other people in everything I do. And to become very good at each job I take, all right? So with that kind of purpose, and with that kind of um, orientation, becoming a generalist, and also the tools through academic training and work, I was able to do many different things successfully. So what do I do here now in Vietnam? I do two things. I do what they call private equity investment. That means I have enough money now. I don't have to work for anybody anymore. I use my money. I invest in different companies. And I sit in their board of directors. I give direction to the CEOs of the companies to manage the business. So I'm their boss, basically. Okay, you go into a company, uh, you know, you have a CEO, right? Well, the CEO reports to me because I sit on the board. I provided money to the company to make a profit, whether it's, you know, selling candies or whatever, uh, or providing service. So that's called private equity investment. That's why I do 50% of my time in Vietnam. The other 50% of my time, I started something called the Vietnam Foundation that provides scholarship for young Vietnamese to attend college. We build school. We provide audio tapes for old people and blind people so they can read books by ears, right? And then I provide uh, a very large uh, online library of learning and teaching materials for Vietnamese universities used for free. Right. So those are non-profit activities. I don't make money there, I spend a lot of money there, all right? but I make a lot of money in my investment anyway. So that's what I do in Vietnam. Right. So it's an accumulation of experience driven by a purpose. Let's go back to number one. Important for you to have a purpose, okay? So I'm going to end here by encouraging you tonight, start thinking about your purpose in life. What do you want to do with your life? Okay, talk to mom, talk to dad, talk to teachers, your favorite teachers, all right? And ask question, why they made a decision to come to Vietnam, to do this, to do that. So you understand the motive, and you can form your own direction. I stop here and open this up for questions. Who wants to go first? Question. Raise your hand and say question. question. Yes. Uh, in your terms, what do you think is success? Um, definition of success. In, your in my okay. I define success as uh, 
having an impact, a positive impact on um, my life first, okay, my family, and the people, the community around me. I'll give you an example, okay? Uh, if, if I invest money, I cannot have success unless I have a profit, right? That I can feed myself, my wife, and my three children, two of them attending this school, and help other people around me. So in one way, success could be measured by the profit that I gain from my investment. The other way I can measure success in what I do in nonprofit is to see the change in the lives of people I touch. All right. That I could provide a scholarship to a poor young student here and six years later, not only he can fit himself after college, but he started a business and have 10 employees. He is supporting 10 people through his business. So that is success to me. That is the return on my investment. Okay, is that okay? The answer? So the impact. Anybody else? Question, don't be shy. Raise your hand and said, question.